Hello everyone, in this tutorial we're going to deploy a Go application to AWS to an EC2 instance and we will use Nginx as a reverse proxy to the API. We will also set up SSL to keep the connection secure and we will add a custom domain. So the application we're going to deploy is this one. It's a REST API built in Go and in case you are interested in building this application there will be a link to that video in the description. So let's get started on deploying this application. Make sure you have created your AWS account. I have logged in to my account here and what we're going to do is to navigate to the EC2 section. Uh, you can click here but in case you don't see EC2 you can search for it. EC2 and you click here. In case you wonder what an EC2 instance is, so it's basically a VPS, so a virtual private server. AVS has added some extra functionality to EC2. So how it works is that AWS have their servers and we are creating like a virtual server on one of their physical servers, if that makes sense. So to create the instance, we will press this button, launch instance. And then we have to give it a name and we will call it Go. API and here you can select what operating system you will be using and uh, we will be using the AWS Linux and this one is also available in the free package so you get a lot of free resources for first year you are using AWS so we will select it here and then we can go to the instance type and basically here you can say how powerful you want it to be. They have a lot of different configuration, but we will select this one, T3 Micro, which is available in the free package. So we press here, and then we will create a key pair. And this key we used when we connect to the EC2 instance from our local computer. So press here, create new pair, and we can call it Go API key. And we want the pair type to be RSA. And for the file format, we will use this one. Then we press create key pair and then you will download it to your computer. So I will press save. Next, we will set up the network settings for the EC2 instance. So we want to allow SSA so we can connect to it from our terminal. We want to allow HTTP and HTTPS so we can visit the API from our browser. And for the storage, we can just leave it as default. And in the advanced details, you have a lot more options, but we're not gonna touch anything of this. We're just gonna leave it as default. So what we can do now is press launch instance. And AWS will now set up your EC2 instance. What we need to do now is open up a terminal on our computer. And then you have to navigate to where you stored the key that we downloaded before. I saved the key in the downloads folder. So I will navigate there. So CD and then download and then we have to change the permission so we will say see mod 400 go api key pem by doing this only the owner can read the file and if you don't change the permission you will get an error when you try to connect to the ec2 instance so aws forces you to do it and what we can do now is to connect to the ec2 instance so let's go back here to the aws and we can click on instances and then we can see here, that's the one I created. And we will see that this one has a public IP. We can copy this IP. We open our terminal and then we will say SSH I and then we specify our key. So go API key. Then we will write the user of the instance and the default user for the AWS Linux is EC2-user. And then we have to do a at sign add and here we will paste the ip address let's see what happens and then it will tell you it doesn't recognize the key but you will just say yes to this and we can now see we are connected to the ec2 instance what we want to do now is we want to install git and we also want to install golang we can do that by writing sudo dnf install git golang so we are using the dnf package manager that come with this linux instance and then we pass Y and that basically say that we confirm everything. So let's run it. And this can take a while. 
So when that is done, what we want to do is we want to clone the repository of the application we're going to deploy. So I will go to GitHub here and I'll press here on the code and under the HTTPS, I will press copy and then go back to the terminal and I will say git clone and then I paste the address. And then I want to navigate to the repository that I clone. So I can say cd res api in go gin. This application is using SQLite and it comes with a migration script to set up the database. To run the migration, we can do go run cmd migrate and then up. And this will download some dependencies. And after that, it will create a SQLite database with all the tables that we need. And once it's done, the next step we want to do is we want to create the executable of the API. So to do that, we will build it. So we'll say go build and then dash O and we want to call it events API. And then we pass the path. So that will be CMD slash API. And we can now see that is building the application. So to make it into an executable, we can run cmod plus x and then event api what we can do now is to run the executable and this api needs some environment variables to be passed so we will do that we will say gin mode and set that to be release so this api is built on the framework gin and we're setting the gin mode to release basically we are saying we want to deploy this for production and then we want to set up work equal to 8080 and we also have to set jwt secret because this app is using jwt authentication this can be any value but it should be like a secure string but for now i'm just going to set it to some secure value one two three four five and then we have to add another variable it's called base url and in the application we are using this variable to tell our api what endpoint we are running on so here we will say https colon slash slash go api dot coding with patrick dot dev and later we're going to create this subdomain and for you you will probably have like another domain that you're going to put in here and then we want to run this in the background so we'll use a tool called noab not sure if that's how it's pronounced and then we will say the name of our executable so that will be events api and we want to send a standard output so all the logs to a log file we can do that by using a redirect operator, so like this. And then we will say events api.log. And then we will write two greater than and sign and then one. So what this does is redirect all the error output to the same file. And then at the end, we will write the and sign. And that tells us we will run this command in the background. Let's press enter. And now to test if it's working, we can use the curl command. So we can say curl and then we say v for verbose. And then we specified our application to run on 8080. Say localhost 8080. And then we will call API v1 slash events. So this is the endpoint that's already set up with this API. We can see here we get a status code 200 back, so that means everything is running. However, currently we cannot access the API from outside the world. We can like only access it from in our server. And in case you want to stop the application, you can write this command. So ps arc and this pipe operator and then grep events API. And then here you will get back the processes running. So then we could say kill and then you pass this ID here and that would stop the application. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a subdomain. So I will go back to my browser and I will go to Cloudflare. And that's what I'm using for my domains. But in case you're not using Cloudflare, you're using something else like Namecheap or whatever, the steps will be the same. So in your DNS management, I will press add record. And then here I will add a, a record and then I will type go dash API. So we can see here, this is how our subdomain will look like. What we need to do here is to add a public IP address to our EC2 instance. So if I go back here to AWS and I have the IP here, I will copy that one, go back to Cloudflare and then paste it here. And then I can press save. 
And we can now see here the DNS record has been added. So again, in case you're not using Cloudflare, just remember you have to create the A record and you pass the name you want it to have and then the public IP to the EC2 instance. And to check if it's working, what we can do now is to visit this site, mydns.net. And here we will type our address, go slash API, and then codingwithpatrick.dev. And now we press search. And then we can see here some of the servers in the world have been updated uh, with this information and some servers have not been updated yet. This can take some time. But if we press search again, maybe some more has been updated. I and mean, we can now see we got more green check marks. What we can do now is to install Nginx. So we go back to our terminal that is connected to the server. We will say sudo dnf install Nginx and then yes. So now we have to edit our Nginx configuration. Here you can use like nano or vim or whatever you're comfortable with. I will use vim, we say sudo vim, and this configuration is located at etc slash nginx slash nginx.config. Press enter, and we can now see the default configuration for this file. And to empty this file, we can say colon, and then percentage, and then d, press enter, and this will empty the whole file. And I already prepared the configuration that we will put in here. So I will go to my blog and then I will copy this and I will paste it into this file. So what we are saying here, the Nginx server, it will listen on the port 80. And then when it receives this address, go API, it will send the request to localhost 8080 where our application is listening on. But the first thing we have to do is to update this server name. So it will be go API, but it will not be yourdomain.com. And to edit, we can press I, and then we can erase this part. And we will write coding with patrick.dev. And then here for the proxy set header, we're saying we just want to send those headers to our Go application. Now you might be wondering like, why are we using Nginx? Do we really need that? And that is true. You actually don't need to use Nginx to run Go uh, web application, but it has some benefits using Nginx. For example, if we would like to add one more Go application, we could just add a new server block, and then maybe that would be like e-commerce coding with patrick.dev or whatever. We could use one server to serve multiple applications. And another benefit of using Nginx is it's very easy to set up SSL, making the connection secure. And in your application, you can just focus on your business logic and you don't need to configure this. So we will save it. We press escape and then we say colon WQ. And then to test that our Nginx is set up correct, we can write sudo nginx t and then it will say everything is okay. But if you had like a syntax error or something like that, it would give you an error here. What we want to do now is we want to restart Nginx so it will be aware of the new settings. So we can say sudo system pt1 restart Nginx. Oh, sorry, my bad. It should be sudo system ctl restart Nginx. Okay, so the Nginx has been restarted. So to be able to serve our traffic through HTTPS, we want to set up a SSL certificate. We can do that by writing this command, sudo dnf. We want to install certbot python tree certbot and nx and then yes. So this is a little program that will take care of the SSL certificate for you. And then we press enter. After we install that tool, we want to get our SSL certificate. So we can write sudo certbot nginx slash d and our domain will be go api coding with patrick.dev. I press enter. And then here you can write an email to get some updates. I can say hello patrick at coding with patrick.dev. And then you have to accept the agreement. So I would say yes here. And then you can say yes or no if you want to receive like email news. I'm going to say no to this one. We can now see that it's requesting to get a certificate for our domain. And a SSL certificate have a date, how long is valid. But usually CertBot will update it automatically. So that is very convenient. But to make sure that it's working, we can just write sudo CertBot renew try run. And here everything seems to be okay. So the only thing to do now is to test and see if our application is running on our domain. So let's open up the browser. 
and then here I will go to go API dot coding with Patrick dot dev. And we can see here we get a 404 because on the index page I don't have anything. But however, if we go to Swagger, we can now see here are all our endpoints available for this API. And we could even try an endpoint out here. So for example, let's say we want to try the register endpoint, try it out. Test one, two, three, four at coding with patrick.dev and then name Patrick. And for the password, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's execute the request. And we can see here we get a 200 once so the user was created. So you have successfully deployed your Go application to AWS and you configured Nginx uh, with SSL. The great thing is once you know how to do this, you can basically use any other cloud provider because the steps are very similar. Like you just launch up VPS instance and then all the steps we went through are basically the same. And one more cool thing is once you start exploring like other services in the AWS, it will be easier for you because many of them are built on EC2. So they are like using EC2 in the background, but have like an additional layer on top of it. I hope you found this helpful. See you in the next video.